People are out here with live bait mostly, but we're having a nice go at it with jerk baits. So right now I'm fishing with the Matrix Shad lure. It's about two and a half inches long, probably three inches with the lip. It's got a lip so you get a nice heartbeat when you jerk it. There's a fish. It's a good one. It's a good one, yeah. There you go. There, oh, man, I had a hit too. Hitting it when it's just falling. Okay, well that's good because this is the right bait. This Matrix Shad bait is the right one because it will, f it has a nice sink rate. Jerk it up and then let it sink. They really like to hit it sinking. There we go, there we go. In the last couple of years I've been incorporating more and more slack line fishing into my techniques. So if you look here in this video clip, you'll see how the line is kind of at a 90 degree angle. I move my rod tip back as the lure falls. So there's no line tension between the rod tip and the lure. And I don't fish like this in every situation with every lure, every presentation, but I work it in to see if, it, if the fish respond to it. And over the last couple years as I'm doing this, I've always kind of struggled with the question, don't I need line tension so that I know when the fish hits the bait? Well, I've had to rethink that question because I've had a lot of success in the last couple years fishing with this slack line technique. And I'm beginning to wonder if the question is not, do I need line tension so that I can feel the strike? But the question really is, do I need to remove line tension so that the fish will bite the bait? And the reason I'm asking the question that way is because it's unnatural for a piece of food in the water to have tension on it. When a trout grabs a bait, there's nothing pulling back. And I think that line tension, in at least some cases, will make that trout or uh, some other game fish spit that thing out of its mouth as fast as it can. I've also been incorporating slack line fishing into jigging much more than I used to. And this is just a recent clip from fishing rigs in Grand Isle. And the thing to watch in my technique is here is that after I jig it, I drop the rod tip down. This releases the tension from the line and it lets the bait fall down without having a lot of tension on it. And when a fish picks it up, they're not immediately going to feel line tension and spit it out. This is how we imagine our jigs acting under the water. We drop it down, we jig it up a couple times, and then we kind of expect it to fall back down to the bottom. But that's not what happens if you keep line tension on your lure. When you drop it down, jig it a few times, and then don't drop your rod tip, it won't drop straight to the bottom. It'll pendulum down, which will give it a kind of long sweep toward the bottom. And that produces a different presentation than you're gonna see with a slack line technique. Now, I'm not saying you're only gonna get a fish to hit your bait if you have a slack line technique going on. However, what are we trying to simulate with this jigging? We jig it up and let it fall straight back down to the bottom. Well. I think it's something like a singular bait fish that's not in a school, maybe it's lost at school, maybe its school has been broken up, and when a trout comes past, where is the closest cover? It's on the bottom. So that bait fish is going to have to head for the bottom to try to find some cover. And so I think that's what we simulate. So if you don't keep tension on the line and you don't feel the trout taking the bait, can you catch a trout? And that's of course the question that I struggle with and it, you may be saying to yourself as well. But in this clip from Grand Isle again, you can see where I drop my rod tip 
I can't feel the bite because I don't have tension on the line, but when I go to jig again, I feel the tension from the fish, I set the hook, and I've got a nice catch. Yeah. Pull them right out of those piles. So I think it is true that if you fish with a lot of slack line, you're not always going to feel the bite. But I found out from fishing the Chalmette rig that trout will take a bait and hang on to it long enough for you to tighten back up, feel the tension of the fish, and set the hook. So if you don't know what the Chalmette rig is, I'll link to videos that explain what this type of Carolina rigging is. But as you can see, there's so much slack line involved with this type of Carolina rig. It's got a floating jig head and then it's got a leader with just a hook on it and a swim bait on the end of that. And they just kind of drift around in the water. And I've caught hundreds of trout with this. The trout will pick the bait up, it will hold it in its mouth for long enough for me to put tension back on, find the fish there and set the hook. Now if you do any bass fishing with plastic, like plastic worms or creature baits or you know, whatever, that type of lure, on say a Carolina rig or a Texas rig, you know that the way to catch bass is by keeping tension off the line. You work the bait and when the fish picks it up, you'll feel a little rattle on the line. You've got to back off immediately. If it feels any tension on the line, it's gone. So you've got to immediately back off the tension, let it swim with the bait a little bit for a few seconds, and then set the hook. <laughs> Got a big one. Got a big one. This is a big one. This is a big one. Is a nice bass. Whew. So this video was just some more food for thought when you're fishing artificial baits but also for you live bait fishermen maybe to think about how will your bait look the most natural in the water. How can you rig it to make it look the most natural. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet Hit the subscribe button. I appreciate all of the subscribers and uh, the, you who regularly follow me. So I hope you can get out there and fish soon and try to be a student of the art of fishing.